Great. All right. Well, here we are. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name's Emily. I'm the local peace economy coordinator uh, here at Code Pink. Um, just set up my screen the right way here. Great. Um, yes, I'm a local peace economy coordinator here at Code Pink. I've been with Code Pink um, in this role since May. So coming up on a year, which is kind of crazy to me, at least. Um, and as many of you know, Jody Evans, co-founder of Code Pink, is typically here. She couldn't be here tonight. Um, so I'll be leading the meeting and it'll be um, a lot of like open conversation too um, and uh, time for sharing. So, so welcome. And if you haven't already, as I've said, please continue to put your name, uh, where you're living or where you are right now in the chat and any other um, information you wanna to share to introduce yourself. And as you always, if you've been here before, um, you know that we always like to start with with a piece of culture um, and also a, a way to ground us as so much of um, this work is about uh, the internal um, internal divestment and the internal embodied experience that we have of ourselves and each other in relationship um, as we pivot to the peace economy. So we'll start with the grounding. Welcome everyone who's coming in. Um, please feel free to put your name and where you uh, where you are right now in the chat. Um, and I mentioned that Joy will like potentially um, the grounding today. It's coming from uh, Reduced to Joy, a book of poetry by Mark Nepo. Um, and I reached for this today for the grounding because I personally just woke up feeling just a lot of grief for, for the world, as I know many of us have, um, but just was feeling it really poignantly this morning um, and throughout the day. And so, yeah, I was wondering what um, what, what uh, medicine this book had for us today. Um, so I'm just gonna take a breath. This poem is called On the Ridge by Mark Nepo. We can grow by simply listening. The way the tree on that ridge listens its branches to the sky. The way blood listens its flow to the sight of a wound. The way you listen like a basin, like a basin, and my head is so full of grief, can't look you in the eye. We can listen our way out of anger if we let the heart soften the wolf we keep inside. We can last by listening deeply, the way roots reach for the next inch of earth, the way an old turtle listens all he hears into the patterns of his shell. And part of the reason that that um, poem felt uh, like it resonated for the topic this evening is because today we're gonna, it's a day of uh, harvesting and sharing and uh, listening to our lives in order to, to learn from our own experience. Um, so that's what we'll be doing today um, or tonight. Uh, so harvesting what we've been learning and sharing with one another so we can all learn from the collective wisdom in the group. And we saw such a beautiful example of that two weeks ago when Macy shared their experience with mapping. I don't know if Macy's here. Um, but if you weren't there, I highly recommend looking back at the recording um, on YouTube, which um, I can put that link in the chat uh, shortly. Um, yeah, Macy shared just a lot of beautiful wisdom about how they've been engaging with local peace economies in, in their community and the mapping that they've been doing. Um, so today we're really practicing the pivot of rushing to wisdom together, pivoting from rushing to figuring it all out and doing and building local peace economies to taking the time to pause and reflect together and to harvest the wisdom of our own lives. And we've been meeting since the beginning of the year, so about four months now, um, which again, hard for me to believe. Um, and I know not everyone has been joining these calls the whole time. For some of you, it might be your first time. Um, and that's great. And because you have an abundance of experience that brought you here regardless. And so I hope you'll lean into sharing during our conversation tonight. And in the spirit of sharing, um, Jody and I just participated in Bioneers, which you, some of you may be familiar with. It's a conference, a climate justice conference that takes took place this year in Berkeley, California. 
and it's a super rich site of collective learning. And so to begin, I and um, Tim, who uh, was there with me as a volunteer, um, are going to share our some of our learnings from our time there, and then we'll move into a larger sharing um, so we can learn from each other. So, um, so first I want to invite Tim, uh, like I said, who was a volunteer with me um, at the conference to share a bit about his experience at the conference. So it looks like you're unmuted, Tim. So thank you. Um, if it's helpful for you all, you can, um, if you're not already on speaker view, um, you can change in the right hand corner uh, to, uh, it says view. If it's helpful for you to just see who's speaking, um, you can hit speaker instead of gallery, or you can, if you wanna feel like the collective presence of the group, you're welcome to keep it on gallery view as well. I, I typically enjoy that, but. All right, so Tim, um, kind of the first questions I have for you are what struck you um, that you heard at the conference and, and what did you what did you leave with? Well, first of all, uh, it was very positive. Like you said earlier about feeling sorrow. There was so much negativity in the world right now, Gaza and Trump and, and climate deniers even and green economy deniers. So what was interesting to me that was so much uh, positive energy about trying to uh, fix climate change and, in, and include all people uh, in this journey to leave no one behind, uh, essentially, in the new economy. So that part was very refreshing for me and positive energy, which mm -hmm. we need sometimes to to build up our strength to go through the day-to-day -day, uh, struggle that is life out there sometimes. Absolutely, yeah, really speaking to like the power of community um, and the joy that's felt in um Yes, in and that. growing the community. I, I, yeah. I think they're very pushing that idea that this whole community needs to grow. We all need to help each other mm -hmm. uh, achieve happiness. Absolutely. Is there anything you heard from any of the presenters or someone that you met there that you want to pass along to the group? Yes. Yeah. I just to give a quick little bit of background of me that I've been with Code Pink eight or nine years now and been involved in the local peace economy for a number of years. And there was an active person named Kelly Curry who was in Oakland a number of years ago. And she was into making smoothies to give to uh, school children and trying to uh, get nutrition into uh, schools and growing local foods and how that is people in the community need fresh grown local foods. And that really got my interest. And I started looking around and studying about urban agriculture and uh, learning about regenerative uh, gardening and growing so I started a little garden plot and uh, it it now has grown to kind of a a small little farm I'm not quite a farm yet but I like to call myself that but at the conference there was a lot of uh, information about what people are doing in agriculture uh, not just urban but agriculture in general so how positive and the science behind it, like one of the uh, uh, lectures I listened to was about uh, how fungus and plant roots uh, talk to each other and, and change, exchange the nutrients they both need, which I found very interesting. But part of the growing the community that we were talking about, when I attended a couple of the, the uh, lectures, that one of them was a, in Oakland, was one of the largest urban farms they always talk about. I, City Slicker Farms, I think they, they're called. And it was very interesting to listen to, to the founder speak about how her experience of trying to get a farm growing. And I think they're managing four farms now around Oakland. So that was very interesting to listen to her. And then I came across another group called the Ecology Center, I got I think that's right, and how they are trying to develop 
a sustainable community for the East Bay and beyond. And one of the things that they were doing was buying food from local farmers so they can uh, give to families in the East Bay area. So that was very interesting. And then I was introduced to another group, the Tomcat Farms out in uh, Pescadero, California, which is right on the coast, who is trying to get small farmers together to grow food for the schools. So this was expanded my um, village or map, really, of what is going on in the Bay Area as far as local growing food for the local community. So it was all very interesting to me uh, and grew my knowledge as well of the urban farming community here in California, North California. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm hearing two like really big pieces in what you're sharing of um, that we've talked about already in the past is inspiration and, and how we get inspired by stories and also mapping. Um, and something you shared with me when you were just when we were talking one on one about um, your experience at the conference is you said the map gets bigger all the time. And I just I love that quote. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, paying attention and and, put, and um, putting yourself out into the community. And I'm wondering if you want to share anything about your process of mapping, because I know you've engaged a lot with that in, in your own local community and how the, the conference kind of added to that. At all. Well, yes. I mean, I th this just added more to it. I mean, I was aware of the Oakland farm and I, I live kind of, I'm in San Jose, which is in the south of the bay. Where Oakland's at the top of the bay, so I, I'm they call it South Bay, so I'm pretty familiar with what's around San Jose and up the up the coast or uh, up the bay a little bit. So this expanded North Bay for me and even out to the coast. So uh, it's what's that old term? Uh, I, I, about oh, I can't think now, but it's it's. Uh, your contacts develop more and more as you're out there every day. So it, it so it's, yeah, at first I thought it was kind of a small community to this urban farming community, but it's getting larger all the time. So that part is exciting, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, are there any like new connections you're excited about making as you, as you expand your, your knowledge of who's who and what is out there? Well, I'm definitely going to contact the Tomcat Farm and see what uh, what they would like to do. I mean, how the, what they're proceeding because uh, the USDA ha does have a program trying to buy farm from local farmers to uh, sell the school. So that'd be interesting to see what they're planning on doing because mm -hmm. as farmers, you do have to sell to make money so you can survive, uh, be a productive farmer. So if we could sell the schools fresh fruits and vegetables to our local schools, that would be very rewarding. Mm. Yeah. Anything else you want to share with the group? Yeah. One, uh, spiritually, I like to pray to the great mother, Earth. And at the, at the uh, final session, they had a Native woman. I think she was from the Plains. And she was going to offer a prayer for us and what she said that the simple prayer is mother earth is good and she sang a beautiful song basically saying that mother earth is good and i found that uh really uh uplifting as well mm -hmm. uh, know that but personally like i said i prefer the mother earth as opposed to male warrior god that they're currently being worshipped now but anyway yeah thanks for bringing that in tim and like the the spiritual component or if that language doesn't resonate with you um just that connection to our home which is the earth that we talk about we've talked about um it's i think it's the first page in the workbook pretty much that economy means home and how we how we man manage our home or how we care for our home which it collectively is the earth um so i definitely felt that presence too at the conference of um, there was a there's a large indigenous presence there um, and centering the indigenous experience and leadership happening in the climate justice movement. 
um, which really brought in the that relational aspect um, that is so necessary that we talk about in peace economy being relational instead of um, transactional and extractive with the earth. So yeah, thanks for naming that, Tim. Um, and thank you for sharing your experience. It was just personally, I just want to share it with the group. It was so lovely to get to spend time with Tim and hear more about um, how he's living um, local peace economy in his life. And he really is. And it's like, su it was super inspiring to me. And with that too, I just want to, before I uh, share a little bit about my experience as well, I just want to say if there's anyone who wants to, as Macy did and as Tim just did, if there's anyone who wants to speak about um, a certain aspects um, of local peace economy, like a certain topic in the workbook or something you're learning um, in one of these calls and share with the group. I would love to um, love for more of that to happen um, to, again, be, I know we were learning from each other in the breakout groups, but um, if you're wanting to share in, in a larger group as well, that is very much welcome. Just um, send me an email. Um, my emails in all of the, the invitation emails that go out and the follow-up emails. Um, or you could email peaceeconomy at codepink.org um, and would love to, yeah, um, support you in, in doing that if, if that's something you'd like. Um, great. And so, yeah, I'll just share a few learnings um, as well, and then we'll go into our smaller groups. Um, and the two... One little thing, if we have time, I'd like to hear what people are doing. They know about the urban economy uh agriculture in their area yeah why don't we do that now actually before i just stay on topic thanks tim um but yeah that was a that was a question that tim wanted to bring to the group what what do people know about um what's happening in the urban agriculture world in their in their local communities so feel free to raise your hand or come off mute francis uh hello everyone francis she her pronouns um um, I'm the board of activists San Diego and uh, do a lot of intersectional organizing. And in what I know of is Food Shed, which is based in City Heights, um, which has a storefront where uh, people can buy fresh fruits and vegetables. And they also do farmers markets and whatnot and they also like have just a community you know uh, mission they through them i've heard of and connected to like people doing a lot of what like wildflower farming there's like a little shop that opened up um i don't know if you guys know nate's garden shop um which is a great little cafe as well um, and next door to that in that same little parking lot is this little flower shop of um women run uh poc women run flower shop and they do local flower farming um and then through food shed um they can connect with a lot of different organizations and um activist san diego is a, a endorser of the uh kale festival so every year in san diego uh for this will be this this September twenty first Saturday will be the from nine to one will be the seventh one. There was a break in COVID, but the Kale Festival brings together a lot of different um, people who are well. It celebrates kale first off, and uh, the planet and the the earth and the life giving food, and uh, it brings together folks like the rare fruit growers. Um, there's the National City Seed Library. Wow. There's, uh, yeah, so uh, things like that. Um, that's what I know. Interesting. Thanks so much, Francis. There's, yeah, you named a lot of things that I want to make sure are on our <laughs> ecosystem map. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to get involved in the Kale Festival organizing, the first meeting is going to be uh, Friday, April 19th, if that's, I believe. Um, I won't be there, but it, I think we'll probably be at the Peace Center, uh, the Church of the Brethren and the, do you guys know the Peace Resource Center has the space next in this whole little complex with the, the Friends Meeting Center as well. Uh, it'll probably be there, uh, but if I'll put my contact in the chat. So if anyone wants to get involved in that, just let me know. 
Please do. And, and can you remind us what city are you in? San Diego. San Diego. Oh, okay. is, is this a national call? I, I wasn't sure. It if is, it was. yes. Okay. Is anyone here in San Diego by show of hands? Or near to San Diego? No. No, I see Shirley, who's up in the Bay Area, I know. Ah, all right. Well, good to see you all. If you guys know anyone who's in San Diego, um, we also have, um, what was I going to say, um, public power campaign going on. All right. Thanks, Check. Andrew. Enjoy. What would you like to share about the urban agriculture scene? In well, um, um, I wanted, uh, so I... Uh, with our, our city, Huntsville, Alabama, does have a botanical gardens. And at the botanical gardens, there's a community garden. And now that's wonderful and good and all that kind of good stuff. I wrote to them, they're also doing a huge project on the other, like on the south side of town, uh, that's uh, um, called John Hunt Park. It's got a lot of uh, like, pickleball courts and and they're doing a lot of planting trees down there and stuff like that and so I wrote to the city and I said why don't you put a community garden down there and they wrote back and said well there's already one at the botanical gardens and we don't need <laughs> yeah you know but I am happy to report that lately it's been on a lot of my uh, radar that uh, there, the, there is a community garden up at Alabama a and University on the north end of town that has been getting a lot of support from like the county commission, I think gave them some money. Um, and the city, I think also gave them some money. And so I'm anxious to get up there and check them out. Mm -hmm. And of course I have a garden in my backyard and the arugula was fabulous this spring. <laughs> um, uh, um, I, I am would love to um, set up an urban land trust um, like they have in Cooperation Jackson. Do you guys know about Cooperation Jackson? No. No, oh gosh. Well, there there's a huge website. You can find them everywhere. There's They have two books out <laughs> um, about what they're doing and a rewrite and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I highly recommend looking into what they're doing. And they do a lot of urban gardening and you know trying to be self-sufficient food wise stuff i would love to start a, an urban land trust here uh that that would you know be like uh cooperation jackson with uh housing and land and what do you do decide to do with the land you know and to me a lot of what you need to do with the land is gardening okay and um i don't know i i'm trying to find lawyers and stuff to to figure out how to do this if it's if it just starts with my house i'm fine with that you know we'll see we'll see what happens but there's my my thinking about urban gardening type stuff there's a lot of help from the cities the local governments are really looking to expand urban agriculture in communities. So I would start, yeah, to help. They're really uh, pushing the state. Did, did you catch the part of my story where where I said, when I, uh, we need another community garden, they went, oh, we've got one. We don't need it. Well, yes. I, yeah. <laughs> but it's there. I mean, I, I would look at your city, your state, your county, because the USDA and, and, the, and part of the green economy is really pushing you know, the Biden bill is really pushing, trying to get urban farming going across the United States. So I'm, I'm I'd, like I'd reach out, to look there, county and, and and see. I'm sure there's some program there in your state. I'm sure the st at the state level, there's something for sure. Federal okay. level as well. Okay. I'll also put a resource in the chat. It's called the Sustainable Economies Law Center. Um, I'm not sure if they um, have like what you're looking for, but they I see them around a lot in the local peace economy, solidarity economy work. So I'll put them in the chat. Um, Shirley, would you like to share? And then we'll move on. Yeah, okay. This was probably pre-COVID, but I recollect, and I just, you know, while people were chatting, I went online to see if I could find it. But here in Oakland, there was some, you know, some group, uh, perhaps they were young people out in East Oakland, 
And what they were doing, and they might have also been in L.A., they were letting people in their front yard take out their lawns and turn the lawns into a garden. And then the idea was because it would be, you know, facing the street, if someone walked by, you know, and they saw strawberries, they could, you know, help themselves to strawberries. I mean, there was no restrictions, but the idea was that, you know, the water waste for the lawn could actually grow many edibles. Um, and, you know, people, I think we're getting very excited about it, but I don't know what happened. As I say, I think it was before COVID, so it might have not continued. Mm. Francis, do you want to share? Uh, I can give you an update on the project that she was talking about because I get okay, around. Great. <laughs> um, it was, I believe that project has survived. That project did get media um, and it was, um, I believe when I connected with them, they had a booth at the Los Angeles. This was Los Angeles we're talking about, correct? Was that, where was she talking about it at? Sorry. Oh, you mean in Alabama. Alabama, okay. Oh, no, uh, I think that was, that was Joy. Shirley's in um, okay. California, I think. Okay, well, yeah, if she's talking about the one, well, there was one in Los Angeles that I'd seen that um, they have a booth at the Los, uh, at the Hollywood Farmer's Market, um, and they have, like, the articles that have been written about them there, and it's been a, from when I connected with them, which was definitely mid, -pan, mid to late pandemic, um, it seemed to be a really thriving program. Um, and, and I'll just throw in, in San Diego, I'm not sure if the other places that are doing it, but, um, something awesome I've seen here, um, is nonprofit that gets volunteers to go pick, uh, fruits from people's trees and meanwhile, like completely cleaning up their yard and garden to make it look beautiful. Um, for free and then they get that fruit over to food pantries uh, to be distributed into that system and so it's a really great sort of circle of support and because the homeowners uh, love that their lawns are getting cleaned for free and that it's going to good use and that fruit's not going to waste because down here in San Diego we have a ton of and others all of South, Southern California, there's so much fruit going to waste just on everyone's in everyone's yards. Yeah, I agree with that up in the Bay Area, same thing. Yeah, it sounds like there's lots of lots of cool products going on. And thanks for surfacing that, um, that Tim. Um just to keep us kind of in the flow of time, make sure we have enough time for breakout rooms and everything. Um, we'll move on. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about my learnings that I want to pass along to the group from Bioneers, and then yeah, we'll do breakout rooms and a large group share. Um, so um, I want to share two uh, learnings from two women in particular that I heard speak at Bioneers. The first is Colette Pichon Battle, and Colette is the co-founder and vision initiative partner at Taproot Earth. You may be familiar, familiar with them. Um, they are on the ecosystem um, Airtable on, on our website. And their mission is to build power and cultivate solutions among frontline communities advancing climate just, justice and democracy. And their work is rooted in Black liberation. Um, and I wish I could share her whole talk with you. And I believe that Pioneers will edit all of those talks and share them publicly. So I'll keep an eye out for that. And um, if that uh, if and when that does happen, I'll, I'll share it out in, in one of our emails. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was, it had me in tears. Um, but what struck me, um, one of the things that struck me about her talk among many was the way she spoke to the need to transform ourselves as we work for change and for transformation. And that's a theme that we've talked about, obviously. And she called us to really look in the mirror. And as we try to bring people into the movement for climate justice, to really ask ourselves, who are we asking them to join with? And to me, her words really reminded um, me of the pivots that we've been talking about and working with and underline the importance of shifting our ways of being and relating as we cultivate local peace economies. 
because the war economy lives in us. And if we don't do the work um, of, of pivoting um, away from war economy habits, we'll continue to recreate it, even if our intentions are otherwise. Um, and it can be really seductive and exciting to focus so much on the external labor that's needed to grow local peace economies. And that excitement is like so beautiful. I mean, I'm feeling just excited just like hearing about all these projects on the call. Um, and that excitement comes from oftentimes like a feeling of authentic connection and authentic community that we're starved of in the war economy. And amidst that, um, we can't forget to do the internal divestment or the pivoting needed to be able to bring about something different in the world. And that's something I really heard in her talk and um, just wanted to pass that through. Um, and one other thing I heard from her is um, the need to visibilize all different types of labor as we shift away from the war economy. And I just wanted to share this quote um, from her talk. She said, let's reimagine labor. Let's visibilize what labor really is. Let's talk about what kind of labor it takes to make sure a baby is raised correctly or that communities are hugged. There is labor happening all the time. Let's redefine this. And to me, this speaks directly to what we're doing when we're cultivating local peace economies because we're told this lie that the economy is the stock market, that it's the banks, that it's the labor that we're paid for. Um, but it's really this wide web of relationships that we're part of that help us be well and get our needs met collectively. Um, so yeah, just so much inspiration. Um, um, I'll put her, uh, the website for Taproot, Taproot Earth in the chat momentarily. Um, but first I wanna share um, one more learning from um, a woman at the conference named Pat McCabe. And I'm just gonna read a little bit from her, her bio on her website. Um, Pat McCabe is a Diné or Navajo mother, grandmother, activist, artist, writer, ceremonial leader, and intentional speaker. She is a voice for global peace and her paintings are created as tools for individual earth and global healing. She draws upon the indigenous sciences of thriving life to reframe questions about sustainability and balance. And she is devoted to supporting the next generations, women's nation and men's nation in being functional members of the group of life and upholding the honor of being human. And what I wanna share is a quote that I heard from her that I keep thinking about and coming back to. She said that she's come to understand that it's her responsibility to ask, are we placing life at the center? And if not, we must begin again. I'm gonna say that one more time just to let it land. Are we placing life at the center? If not, we must begin again. I got chills when I heard that from her. And I believe that question, if I'm remembering the context she provided correctly, um, came to her through ceremony and through her own spiritual work and journey. So I don't wanna claim that question for myself or for any of us here. And I also wanted to bring it to the group because it felt so centering to me. Um, and like it can really ground and, and cut through so many of the distractions that the war economy um, the war economy offers us um, as we or as, even as we do the work to cultivate local peace economies um, because of the ways that the war economy lives in us and pits us against each other um, through these addictions or habits that we talk about in the pivots. So just wanted to offer that wisdom from Pat McCabe to the group as well. Um, and I think it's time for breakout rooms. Um, when we're in when in the breakout rooms, I'll, I'll put those two websites in the chat, Pat McCabe's website and Taproot Earth, um, but I'll get us to the breakout rooms. And the question for the breakout room, again, I'll put this in the chat and broadcast it as well. Um, in the spirit of sharing and harvesting, collective learning, what are you learning along your local peace economy journey? What has surprised you? What has been challenging? And what has been joyful? Um, so I will, let's see, how many people do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I will do five groups. So you'll probably be with two or three people. And please keep your, keep your time just to make sure that everyone has um, time to speak and feel free to introduce yourself again and, and share where you are. Um, and we'll have 15 minutes and um, I'll call you back.
Welcome back, everyone. Just a reminder to please mute yourself. You're probably off mute coming back from the, um, coming back to the breakout room just to reduce background noise. Um, and yeah, we're gonna open it up for large group shares. Before I do, just because I know, um, you know, as we get talking and then it gets to the hour and some people might have to leave right at the hour. Um, I just wanna share a couple links. Um, so everyone has the opportunity to see it. Um, we just, I don't know if you all know, but Code Pink has a radio show and we just um, did a radio show episode about the local peace economy. And we, it sounds like, looks like some of you have heard it. And there are some little snippets of more interviews from Bioneers as well as I interviewed Jody about local peace economy. So um, I'm gonna put that link in the chat for the radio show. It's uh, the one right there, it's episode 242. Hope you all enjoy it if you take a listen. Um, yeah, Matt, there are so many incredible people at Bioneers. So you'll get to hear from a few more people. Um, there's a panel uh, tomorrow um, that Jody is going to be on with the Peace Economy Project about transitioning to the peace economy. Um, so if you want to register for that, that's tomorrow morning and um, an email went out um, tonight as well um, with that invitation link. If you don't get it in the chat um, to our local peace economy group, which I'm guessing many, most, if not all of you are on. Um, since you're here. And then the last link I'll share really fast is just the link to register for our next uh, call in two weeks. And with that, um, yeah, what's alive for you? What are you learning? What did you hear from other people that you want to share? Um, what's what's struck you about your conversation? Feel free to raise your hand or come off mute. Jerry um, talked with two two people who I think one is still here um, about um, things to do with gardens since we were talking about community gardens and um, and hearing about um, what other the other two people who were there, what they're doing. And um, so it's, it's very nice to chat with each of them and to share ideas together. Mm. It's very good. Yeah. Thank you. What's, what's one idea that you shared or that you was shared with you that um, that's, yeah, that you're holding on to? Oh, um, I was talking about we we used to have um, a small plot of plot of land here at uh, an apartment complex where where I live, and um, there were a number of people who wanted to have gardens on that plot of land, and the um, the management said, "Okay, you know, you're just gonna uh, have to." take care of them yourselves, <laughs> you know, get the water and whatever else you're going to do in there. So, um, so that was very nice. Yeah. That was a nice experience. Cause you get to know people out there and, um, you get to eat some nice fresh food too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks Marjorie. Yeah, you're Francis. Uh, just want to, date that uh, I just put a link in the chat and I encourage everyone to check it out. Uh, Activist San Diego has a monthly community meeting. Well, often it's hybrid now. Uh, and last month we had all the local uh, groups that are organizing for uh, ceasefire and Palestinian liberation. Uh, we had them reporting on what the different groups are doing. And Jody uh, Evans was able to join us and she her words, of course, uh, once again, were incredibly powerful and moving, and I highly recommend watching it. Uh, uh, even if you just watch the part where she's at, it's it's really powerful. The whole thing is great, but um, just want to recommend uh, checking that one out. Thanks for sharing, Francis. I'm just going to save that link for myself and save the chat. Um, anyone else want to share? I'm also curious, if what are people learning about their own process with the pivots? Um, if, if that's alive for anyone right now. Is there a pivot that you're working with that you're learning about where your resistance is or 
um, where it's alive in your life. Francis, I'm not sure if your hand is still raised for this question or not. <laughs> so if it is, feel free to um, come off mute again. But or is Vara, did you want to share? I see you're unmuted. Oh, thank you for asking that. No, I I had a very good experience with excellent people, but um, I can't express myself very well. But thank you. And no, I'm, no. I'm being recorded. I don't like that. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds <laughs> yeah. good. So uh, I'll speak. I had a. I, I thought the the mapping was very interesting. I did a, a map which was a a series of, of you can see it here a series of circles, because for me peace is very central to my work as an artist and an activist. And I was telling Marjorie and the gentleman from West Africa who was in our little group that um, I am about to do on Earth Day, which is on April 22nd, uh, to do a, a, a ritual performance on the Praza of Santa Fe, where I live, where I'm going to be, it's a piece called Tears of the World, which I have done before for Iraq or Ukraine last year. And, but this year I'm combining, because my work is all about peace, whether I do an environmental, work or a more politically oriented work. So I feel that there is no flourishing of our earth without non with that with violence. So we need to stop the wars so that so I'm able to combine the two. But I love this uh, this uh, drawing because you know I saw well yeah peace is really central all my work in my community, in the earth, and in the world. So that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I have to share. Thanks, Dominique. Thanks for sharing your map. Yeah, for those of you here with us two weeks ago, we talked about mapping. So um, if anyone wants to share their map now or later on, um, even if it's yeah. not during a call, if you want to email it um, to uh, peaceeconomy at coping.org, we'd love to see it. Um, I think we might have time for one more share if anyone wants to share. And also, I'm not sure your name, but um, I see iPhone is putting um, lots in the chat. So thank you for that. Um, Frances has her hand up. Yes, Frances, did you want to share again? Or is that hand from? Okay. Sorry, that was from previous. I, okay, I'll take it. iPhone man, my name is Jello Abdul. <laughs> What I have uh, posted uh, some ideas. I don't know is uh, it's done for you. Yes, there's a lot there. So highly encourage people to take a look at that and uh, save the chat and I'll save it as well. But anyone else? Last words? Joy? Okay, I'm gonna hog the mic again for a second. Please. Um, I'm just, I wanna admit that, um, uh, you know, I show up here cause it, this is good community and I need to hear people, you know, like-minded people, but boy, I just work a lot and I have had, I'm working on my workbook, but I'm only a few pages into it. I haven't even gotten to the pivots. Um, but in our small group today, I said, I, you can tell me what I would like to see is a pivot and maybe it's already in the list. I know I read them before, but I can't remember what they are. Okay. Um, from what I see is this uh, energy density uh, sort of economy or activity to a more hands-on human powered, you know, interactive closer to home type thing as and by energy density i mean you know like uh production and stuff that requires a, a, a vast amounts of fossil fuels and and uh, to ship and to grow large scale and all of that kind of stuff um so uh, there's a thought about pivots okay <laughs> thank you joy i appreciate that and yeah uh, yeah that list can always grow and evolve and um as we continue to learn so yeah i'll, I'll pass that on to to jody as well 
I, mean, I would like to speak to that point. That's why growing local food is is important. Instead of growing huge fields, then ship putting them on trucks, then shipping them halfway across the country. That's why uh, the local peace economy or growing local food is important. Absolutely. Yeah, lots of talk of local food tonight. I loved it. Um, well, I know that we're at the top of the hour, and so um, some of you may need to go. Um, but I just want to thank you all for the rich conversation. I hope it was rich and juicy in your breakout rooms. Um, and yeah, hope that you come back in two weeks or join the panel um, tomorrow and listen to the radio show. If you need anything from us, you can email. Um, I'll put it in the chat real fast. Um, Peace economy at codepaint.org. And yeah, just really appreciated hearing from so many of you tonight. And again, um, if there's anything you would like to speak to um, in the group um, during one of the meetings, during a large group share, um, like Tim did, like Macy did two weeks ago, please let us know. Would love, would love to have you share and um, bring more of your voices in more consistently. Um, and Francis, I see your hand, um, but I'll just kind of formally close it here so uh, people feel um, like they can go. And we'll see you in two weeks, hopefully. Have a great two weeks.